Okay, let's face it. Humanity doesn't really like change and you can see why i mean you know safety security why fix it if it's not broken better the devil you know all that sort of stuff but most of our behavior i think is based on habit and routine and there's something called the 2190 rule which goes it takes 21 days to form a habit and 90 days for that habit to be a permanent part of your life and a study was done in 2009, which showed that the average was in fact 66 days. So anywhere between three weeks and three months is how long it takes you to form a habit and for it to become part of your life and then resist any change to it. And then for reasons of my own, I decided to give these things a go, 3D printers. Now, for ages, I'd been saying stuff like, ah, they don't do a very good job, they're too expensive, everything I can do, I can do with real tools, and it'll take ages to learn. But turns out, that was just stuff I was telling myself, because they're not very expensive. You buy one of these for about 125 quid, they take hardly any time to learn, all of the software is free, and they open up possibilities you couldn't have before. So and became a bit of a convert. And then I realized that I was doing exactly the same thing, forming a new habit and then resisting change to that habit. Then Elegu wrote to me saying, do I want to try their Saturn 4K Ultra, which they're going to release, and it's a resin-based printer. Now, I do have some experience with resin-based printers. I've used the earlier Saturns and I've used the Mars. So my initial thought was, well, no, not really. I mean, in my mind, they're a bit expensive. They're um, not as strong as a filament printer. Everything I want, could do on the resin printer, I could already do on the filament printer. And I'd add it to that list, and they're a bit smelly. So I might as well write back to them, saying thank you, but no thank you. But I stopped myself and suddenly thought, hang on. I would have said exactly the same thing about filament printers only two years ago, or maybe three years ago. Am I being unfair? Am I being guilty of the same mistakes? Because these two things do have their advantages. I mean, one thing is the resolution is incredible. I mean, you really get some detail at the kind of resolution you've got. And of course, wanting to make technical parts, things like bearings, valves, pistons, maybe I should actually dump some of my prejudices, try to change some of my habits, and give this thing a go. So, I obviously wrote back going, yeah, that'd be lovely, and they sent me a Saturn 4K Ultra. So, let's get it out of the box. So that's it out of the box. Now, it does feel like a really chunky, well-built machine, and this bottom section here, it's all metal. Because the front panel's plastic, but the rest of it is metal, and it has a die-cast frame holding a really chunky stepper motor, which we'll talk about in a minute. And if we look under the bottom, that's metal too. And we have this vent grill here. That's to vent the LED. It's to pull in cold air to keep the screen nice and cool. And it's got some really cute features, some things that I really think are very cool. One of them is this. That lifts up like that, so you can actually access it. And that's a... Um, it seems a trivial change, but actually it isn't, because lifting off the top of these things can always be a bit of a problem, and there's a possibility of knocking stuff. Swiveling it up out of the way like that, very neat indeed. Although there is one thing that's a bit annoying, is um, it doesn't have a handle on it, so you have to grip hold of it and move it. If it had a handle, it'd be a, a one-hand use. So that's a bit of a shame that they missed that chance. This bit here is the bit that's actually driven by the stepper motor. What it does is tilt. Now that might not seem so useful, but when you think about these things, they print on a screen and then normally they have to lift it off. And there's a lot of force in order to do that. And things like the lead screws need to be strong. And of course it will wear out the film because you're basically pulling as tight as you can to get the damn thing off. This thing peels it off and that's gonna give it a longer life and it's gonna put less stress on the machine. So that's pretty cool. Now setting this up, there's a couple of travel retaining bolts there that can just come out. That lifts off, and there's the FEP screen with its screen protector, and we'll just peel that straight off. <laughs> That's drum tight, eh? It's like a musical instrument. When you look around the bottom, you'll see a load of screws there holding that FEP in place, and what they've done, they've sent some spares. 
Yes. That's very cool because this is going to be something that you change. If you change it and it um, thread de-threads a screw or the head gets stripped out or something like that, that's a nuisance. So having spare ones, pretty neat. So that's that one. And we see the tilt screen and it's got its own cover on there. And we peel that off. There we go, and that's the screen itself, and that's the bit that tilts backwards and forwards. To install it, that goes back in, and then there's a couple of no screws here that drop in there to hold it in place. Another neat feature is this is actually heated. So it'll heat this to about 25 degrees, which is pretty cool when it comes to something like resin, keeping it all at a nice temperature. Another cool feature is this thing. This is the actual build platform and it's described as auto leveling and that's because it's got springs in here so as it pushes down those springs will take up any twist. That's really quite neat. The other thing that's really very cool about it is how easy it is to fit. You'll notice there's a little lever in there. This slides into that. Press that lever down. It's locked in place. So setting that up is another one of those out of the box experiences, hey, it's really easy to do, and that's the thing that everybody's aiming for, in particular, Elego. Finally, on these really cute features, they've got this. This is a drip dry, because you're, you're using resin, so when you take this thing off, chances are it's gonna drip, and of course you're moving it that way, so where it's gonna drip is right there, and that's gonna ruin the front. But having a drip dry when you take things off is gonna help prevent that. So the drip tray just goes on there, you're removing something, it's dripping into there. That's very neat. But it is another thing actually here that I think is a bit of a shame, is that you can't close that when the drip tray is in place. And what that means is that drip tray has to be left off during the print, and it's something that you need to do when you're removing the print. I think myself, I'd prefer the drip tray was just there, and then I wouldn't have to bother with that. But at least they do provide a drip tray. Another cute thing is this thing. It's the AI camera. It's supposed to detect faults or allow you to do snapshots of it rising out of the resin. One thing not to forget is to remove the lens cap. So, out of the box, it feels nice and chunky and it's got some really cute features. Now let's find a place to put this in. So it's going to live here, and it's going to live here because right above the clock there's a ventilator. Now I forgot to point it out, but at the back of this is a little plastic plate you can unscrew and stick a ventilator hose in there. But of course there is still a chance of it fuming out the side, and what a lot of people do is build an enclosure. And if I build an enclosure, I've got a ventilator to ventilate it out there, so that's why it's going to live here. But the whole thing is supposed to be easy to do, and apparently we've done all we need to do, and we're pretty much ready to turn it on, which we'll do in a second. You might notice right here we've got this wash station, the Mercury Wash and Exposure Station. Uh, they sent me that as well. I have never used it, and I'm quite looking forward to using it, but I want to focus on this, so we'll have a look at that in a different video. And of course the thing comes with the usual little bag of goodies. I mean, uh, we've got some filters here to filter the resin when you're changing resin. There's some uh, rubber gloves, some carbon masks, a little set of tools, the spare screws that I showed you, and of course the user manual and these scrapers. And there's a couple of scrapers, a plastic one for cleaning the FEP and a steel one for getting things off your plate. But that's it. We're now ready to load up the software and turn it on and print something. So on the setup screens, there isn't a lot to go through. You turn it on, select your language, it'll automatically detect the Wi-Fi, enter the password, and the inevitable systems download will take you right here. Now, they did have an aerial that you used to have to screw on, but this actually, the aerial's internal, one less thing to do, one less thing to worry about, and it's fairly intuitive. There's the settings menu, and at the bottom of the screen there'll be a couple of dots. If there's a couple of dots, it tells you there's more, so you just swipe to the next one and swipe back to the other, and there's the Wi-Fi, and you can see it's picked up my Wi-Fi, no problem at all. So there's really nothing to go through there, and... There's a handy user's manual, so that if you want to actually look at that, then look at the manual. But it really walks you through the whole procedure, so nothing. Let's have a look at the software. So the software comes on this USB stick that's in the box. The whole point of these machines has become ease of use, and there's very little to do with them, and they're really quite intuitive, so it's no more trouble 
than setting up a modern day television. It's really pretty straightforward and almost trivial, actually. Anyway, let's plug this in and find out what the software is. It's pretty straightforward. Just stick the USB in, select the Windows, Linux, or Mac operating system, and click next, next, next until you get to this screen. There is a pull down menu with pretty pictures to show you which one. And of course, I've got the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, and it's got a little image of the actual bed there. Now, what I want to do is this one. It's an air engine with a rotary valve right there, and we've got a piston and a piston cylinder. And what I'm looking at is how well these will fit into each other as engineering parts. So we'll export those and bring them into Chatterbox. So I bring them into Chatterbox, and if you want to change the settings, you change the slice settings there. And if you're happy with them, you just slice it. Once it's sliced, save it. So we've set up the machine, we've set up the software, we've got our file, we've created our printable file, and this is what I mean about resin being a bit more troublesome than FDM, because right now, on FDM, you just print it out. But with resin, you've got to think about what you're going to do after you've printed it. So we pour in the resin and get the printing going, but when it's printed, we're going to need to wash it, and we're going to need to cure it. Now, you can just stick a load of IPA, isopropanol alcohol, in a jug and swish it around, which is what I've done before when I've used these resin printers, and then sit it on the windowsill and let it get some sunlight for a day, and that'll do you. As I said, they can be sent me the mercury wash station. So after I've printed this, what I'm going to have to do is put it into the mercury wash station. And for that, I need to get used to the mercury wash station. Now, I haven't bothered going into lots of other technical detail. Like, you know, there's a fast and slow print, the LCD screen, you can do a quad to dial in your resin settings, all that kind of stuff. Because the uh, main reason is um, I don't love 3D printers. I love what they can do, and that's what I'm interested in. Because I'm a basically a lazy guy. I just want the thing to print what I print with as little trouble and as little input from me as possible. And my experience with Elegant Machines is that's been the case. And certainly with this setup, I mean, you know, I've had to do this video, so it's taken a while longer, but the actual setup, if you get out of the box, it's trivial. It's really easy to get this thing set up. And that's what's really important about it, I think. And the big question is, is it worth it? Is it worth the extra cost and hassle for bringing in the extra resolution that you can get from it and the extra detail you can get from it? And that's what I'm really interested in. And for that, I don't really want to be doing anything apart from filling it up with resin and printing it. If I have to change some settings, well, I'll look at that then. But right now, all I'm going to do is print from the thing. And that's all I really want to do. Now, I know that it's split into people who love 3D printers and people who love what 3D printers can do. I'm on that camp. I, I love what they can do. And that's what I'm really interested in. I've always found Elego machines to be a really good deal for the money, and I don't think this is any exception really. It's certainly a solidly built machine, and certainly very easy to use. Now we're going to have a look at what the quality of the print is, but like I mentioned earlier, I think to maintain that quality, sloshing around in a jug is not going to be the thing, and so we need to look at the wash station. And that's what we'll do in the next video, and then of course we'll do our print, We'll have a look to see what we actually get from it and then make a decision. Was it worth all the trouble? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.